Well, my mother was uh, a person of uh, considerable independence and originality. She met my father in college uh, at Roger Williams University in Nashville, Tennessee, in about 1899. Uh, she was um, Look at me while you're talking about it. very uh, uh, creative. She was a musician. She sang in her university choir and later in uh, college uh, musical organizations and later still in community musical organizations. Uh, she was an organizer, too. She was active in the club movement, the women's club movement, uh, as it was called, and she was affiliated with the National Association of Colored Women's Clubs, uh, and she was president of her local club in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, earlier in other communities uh, before I was born. What kind of personality uh, did she have? Was she talkative? Was she lively? She was, was uh, she... very uh, uh, forthright and uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, forthcoming. Uh, she uh, was not afraid of anyone. She was uh, a person who who did not uh, who did not have uh, any patience with uh, people who did not respect her. Uh, she uh, did not allow people to call her by her first name if they did not know her well. Uh, she had a way of addressing white men or white women who spoke to her as auntie. And she said, now let me see, um, is it your mother or your father that you think was my sister or brother? And they would be taken aback by this kind of uh, attitude, and so they would retreat, you see, to their position. She was a stern disciplinarian. Uh, she uh, did not uh, permit us to do what we had not received permission to do. Uh, she made us do our homework completely and very promptly. Uh, she did not uh, tolerate disobedience of any kind. And she had many ways to punish us. But she believed in corporal punishment. Corporal punishment. Ah, uh, okay. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, uh, with, with all with that implied and mean, meant uh, then and now. Uh, and uh, she simply didn't tolerate disobedience. Uh, and, as, and as, and as a, a, a young boy, were you ever disobedient? I suppose I was. Uh, I think that uh, she considered me to be disobedient anyway, and she punished me for my disobedience. Um, I would argue the point with her, which, of course, was also somewhat frustrating and uh, disgusting to her. And, uh, and uh, when she would punish me, I would tell her that uh, it really wasn't going to do very much good anyway. And that would uh, make her more furious. <laughs> and uh, so we had, we had it out. On the other hand, my, my father was not a disciplinarian at all. Uh, he left all of that to her. And she accepted the responsibility uh, with some enthusiasm, I'm afraid. Uh, my father was uh, uh, quite a different type of person. He was tender-hearted and very, very uh, loving, and uh, was not uh, was not strict on his children at all. Um, he hoped that we would do right and do better, but uh, he was not going to force us to do it. Uh, he was not the type uh, to force anything on us. He, 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 he talked a good talk, you know. He, he was rather blustery, uh, but we all knew that that didn't mean very much, that he, he wasn't going to back it up with uh, any kind of uh, force or uh, any, any reality or promise and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so we, we didn't take him we didn't take him too seriously. 
Uh, he wasn't that much of a threat. No, he yeah. wasn't that much of a threat. <laughs> but he was, uh, he was very anxious for us to learn, and uh, he gave excellent examples of studiousness, but he was, he was himself a, a scholar, hyphen, whatever else he was, attorney, teacher, uh, uh, community leader, and whatnot. But he was uh, first and foremost uh, uh, a studious person. Uh, he, he, he read uh, voraciously uh, every evening. And he was writing all the time. At one time, I thought he was writing uh, in connection with his legal work. That is, he was. I thought he was working on briefs or cases or whatnot. Turned out that he was not. He could turn that off and turn his attention to creative writing. He wrote novels, uh, wrote essays constantly. And uh, I did not know at, until later that that's what he was doing. Uh, he, I think he would have been, if he could afford to have been it, if he could afford to to, to uh, made a living off it, I think he would have much preferred to be a writer. Uh, and uh, and uh, he sounds like a man who, as as a black man in that time, really would have had a a really hard time fitting into the social structure because there wasn't any, there wasn't any place for scholarly, well-educated Renaissance black men. Well, no, I don't think there was a place for them, uh, and I think that that had that was part of his problem uh, that he he never did fulfill himself. I think because one he was not a successful writer, and two, uh, there, weren't any, <laughs> there, wasn't, there weren't many people who appreciated what he was trying to do. And so he just went on plugging and plugging on day after day, writing and tearing up and writing and sending it off and getting rejection slips and writing some more and, uh, and well, that sort of thing. Was he angry about the racism that kept him from expanding. He did not the way seem to be angry about anything. Uh, my father was, he always told me that uh, I was much more hard nosed uh, as a youngster than he was as an older person. Uh, that uh, he was not angry, he was not bitter. And I think he took out his frustrations uh, on uh, w with his writings. Uh, he he compensated his frustrations with his writings, his anger, and so forth. 